Hello, uh, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do cross sectional dependence test uh, when you're doing your quality data analysis. Uh, I will go straight forward to show you how to do the test and then I'll tell you why you have to do this test and I'll also show you uh, an example for my research paper about how to present your test the results uh, in your paper okay so this is my uh, data set i have it's a panel of about 25 countries uh, for me i normally put the country name and i bring the id and the year okay. and then these are my variables okay uh, there are two ways you can do the sectional dependence test one is the pre-estimation and the other one is the uh, post-estimation approaches. Now the, the first one, you just have to do the test on your variable list. And in the second approach, which is the post-estimation, you have to do some estimation and then from after the estimation, do the test. Okay, uh, let's first look at the pre-estimation using your variables only. This is how you, uh, by the way, this test is based on the surround paper, the uh, surround uh, 20, uh, 2004 paper. Okay, so how do you do this test? Uh, the first, I'm going to X to set my data. And then next is uh, the command you use is uh, xtcdf. Okay, you can install this uh, by typing uh, ssc install stcdf. Okay, I have it installed already, so I'm just going to issue the command straight away. So xtcdf is all you have to type and then you list all your variables that you're going to that are going to appear in your regression so here i'm going to list them list them as they appear okay so these are all my variables Let me add more. Okay. So these are my variables I'm going to use for my analysis. So I want to do the cross sectional dependence test. So just enter. And here we go. So we have our results here. Uh, this is the variable uh, I see in my regression equation. And this is the test statistics. And this is the p value. The average t and the rest but our focus is on the test statistics and the p-value what's the the null hypothesis is what cross-session independence okay but this is kind of a very strong hypothesis but more, these days we use the weak uh, cross-session uh, dependence okay so let's Look at our null hypothesis, go back to the p value. You raise that here we reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is cross sectional dependence in this variable among the cross sectional units. Here we reject the null, we reject the null hypothesis, we reject the null hypothesis here. Well, for this particular variable, which I never will cover up, yeah, which is a current account balance. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Well, the implication is that this variable does not have uh, a cross session dependence, rather, it is cross session independence. Okay. Then we have export concentration this weekly, since we can, and we have uh, same rates in US dollars and we have red GDP. Okay. 
So looking at these p values, you will see that out of all our products, it's only one that shows a cross sectional independence. So we can conclude that there is a substantial cross sectional dependence in our, our panels. Okay. Now, if this is the case, then the the traditional panel fixed effect and the random effect estimators uh, may produce uh, inefficient estimates okay because those estimations or those estimators are based on uh, the assumption of cross sectional independence okay so once you have test for variables and final results like this then you probably have to use a different estimation approach but the question is why do you have to do this uh, like I mentioned uh, uh, because of the high interdependence and integration of all of countries these days is common shocks that are arises common shocks that arise in one country it's likely to be transmitted to the other country okay so you can see that globalization financial and economic integration has brought situation where countries are interdependence interdependent on other, uh, other other countries so this is the problem and it is proven that once you have this cross-sectional dependence in your sample then the it's a fear it is uh, affects the the, the estimates, especially if you are dealing with dynamic quantum estimation. Okay. So, uh, how do you present your result uh, in your research paper? Okay. How do you do that? Uh, this is my recent research publication. Uh, I'll take you straight to the result section. It's in the Journal of Planet Production. Uh, you will see that. In my paper, uh, I've taken my time to show to my readers uh, the cross-sectional dependence test. Okay. okay, so you can see that uh, I've presented the test to show that there is cross-sectional dependence, and as such, the panel phase effect and rather uh, effect estimated might not be efficient. Okay, so. This is how you present your test. I have the variables here, right? And then I have the CD. Now this value is actually the the test statistics, the CD, the CD test. And I use uh, the stars to indicate the, the level of uh, the p values here. Okay. You can see that though the tens and the above population in my country, in my sample doesn't have uh, cross-sectional dependence uh, because most of the other variables have it i just use this as a reason to use a different estimation approach that can account for cross-sectional dependence okay. so this is how you present your result in your research paper okay uh thank you very much for listening and watching my videos if you like my videos please subscribe because i'll be bringing a lot of practical approach to second generation of other analysis. Okay. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.